Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. I'm very excited today to be showing you the Starship Bridge demo. This demo is uh, created by a developer who goes by the handle of TMEC. All I know is that they come from Nashville, Tennessee in the US. And it's um, basically replicating uh, the, the bridge of the USS Voyager from Star Trek Voyager. And it is a, a very cool repl replication. It's, uh, it has a very realistic feeling to it. You can really imagine people sitting in it like it's like, like it's the real starship or like, a, like it's a, the ori real original set. And um, this was originally created partly to demonstrate the use of Unreal Engine 4. So Unreal Engine 4 came out pretty recently and uh, it's a game development kit, uh, the, the sequel to the UDK Unreal Development Kit, which was version 3. And and um, it's it has a great uh, it has Rift support out of the box first of all, so anybody can build an build an Oculus Rift game with it pretty easily. Um, it has a very very friendly licensing scheme for people who are just getting started in game development. You pay them twenty dollars a month, and you receive all their updates for as long as you continue to pay the twenty dollars a month. If you stop paying them, you can still keep the product you already have at that time. And um, and the only other thing that they get is they get 5% of your gross revenue that you get from selling your game. And in addition, with uh, they recently changed their EULA so that um, I believe the first $3,000 every quarter, they, uh, they do not take any royalties on that. So, so basically what we've got here is if you make less than $3,000 every, every three months from your game, you pay them nothing except for that twenty dollars a month for the subscription, which you can cancel anytime you feel like it. So that's an amazingly friendly and easy, easy to pay for, even for amateurs, even for, for people who are just tinkering around, tinkering around with game development, with Rift development. So definitely, definitely check that out. And um, I, I think that uh, this will help a lot of people to get into Rift development who might have been a little scared by, say, Unity Pro's license terms, which was like $75 a month, which is pretty intimidating. Um, there are a few differences in how Unreal Engine 4 works in the Rift. Um, I'll show some of them to you in the demo. Um, first of all, it fills more of the screen. So in Unity, the the two images, the left and right images of your eye, they um, they just touch in the middle, but and they don't actually reach the left and right edges of the screen. And as a result, they can get higher frame rates in Unity, but it doesn't fill quite as much of your field of vision as an Unreal Engine 4 demo, which actually does extend all the way to the left and right edges of the screen. Anyway. Um, Without further ado, let's jump into the demo and take a look at what this looks like. I'm very excited to see this recreation of the USS Voyager. Alright, here we are in the demo. So far, I cannot see anything. I've got one eye closed because this is very awkward. I need to first put it into Rift mode by pressing tilde to bring up the console. I can't actually see the console. Um, and now I'm going to type stereo on. There we go. Now I'm in rift mode, and this is looking beautiful. Now as you can see, and I'm indicating on the screen, the, um, the, w the width of the two images extends all the way to the left and right edges, and they actually have to render a lot more pixels into their off-screen buffer in order to pull that off, and that definitely pulls the frame rate down. So just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to hit my tilde. Nope, there's my console. I can read it now. Sort of. Ah, okay, I can't really focus on that. I'm not sure why. This is not working right at 1440p. Anyway, I can still type. So I'm going to type stat FPS. And um, I'm v-synced at 30 FPS, apparently. I'm going to do HDMI, HMD v-sync off. There we go. So... Um, so you can see my frame rate right now. I can I can barely see it out of the corner of my eye. It's very small. It's fluctuating between around 30 and 40 FPS at this resolution. And normally in a Unity demo running at 1440p, I would be able to get um, frequently a solid 60 FPS depending on the demo. Um, in a lot of demos, I can definitely do that. So uh, Unreal Engine 4 with this larger field of view 
It fills more of my vision, even if my eyes are pressed really close against the lenses, but the, the penalty I pay for that is less frames per second. And as far as I know, that's not configurable right now. I hope to look into uh, the source of Unreal Engine 4 to see if I can find a way to configure that in the future. Anyway, uh, let's get rid of that FPS. And let's take a look around the Voy USS Voyager. So here I am, the turbo lift. It is spacious. This is a spacious elevator. I feel like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I feel like about seven, eight people could stand in here. So yeah, they've got plenty of room in here. And for some, somehow it breaks like into the room without, there's no like crack in the floor or anything. I'm not entirely sure how that works. And um, here we are on the bridge. Oh, wow. Wow, this is gorgeous. Look at this. You can see all the control panels and the lighting. The lighting is just amazing in here. There's lights on the floor and the ceiling and all the consoles, I believe. I'm not sure if the consoles are actually emitting light. I think they are self-illuminated, but I don't I don't think like this red light's actually shining on this wall here. Uh, some of these lights are blinking like these red lights. And you can see a nice diagram here of the USS Voyager. I think it's got little icons for all the different uh, facilities and stuff. There's like tables and chairs. And I don't I don't even know what all this stuff is. That that's probably the warp engine there. And back here is I guess those are the... Uh, damn it, I don't know anything about Starship Engineering. But uh, but that's a very cool diagram. NCC 74656 is its uh, registration number. And this panel is just like... Everything, the scale in this whole room is, is perfect. Like, I feel like if I could get my hands in this game right now somehow, I could reach down and just start operating this panel. That is to say, if I had any Starship training and knew how to operate this damn thing. All I see is a bunch of colored buttons with tiny text that I can't read. And maybe you guys can see it clearer than me, but I have no clue how to operate this. No clue. There's like radial buttons and grids of buttons and buttons along the top. Anyway, enough of me being stupid. Um, here's the security tactical station. There are some dots that don't mean anything. Scan parameter. Here's a column with a cool display on it. And like, one thing that this makes me think of is imagine if this could be like my my computer. Like, if I could just have a chair here. Like, there's a chair over there. Like, what if I could just sit in this chair? If there were a sit button in this demo, if I could just sit in this chair, and like, all of these monitors would be like my monitors. And I could run what other, whatever applications I want on them. I could roll my chair from over here to over here read monitors here, I could put another monitor up here, another monitor up here. I could just have monitors all around me, and I could be on the deck of the USS Voyager at the same time. That would be pretty awesome. So I think this, there are just tons of cool applications you can imagine just seeing this. What's in this door? Computer, ah. activate emergency medical holographic program. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Computer, activate emergency medical holographic program. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Why do you always have to say that? I can only speculate about my programmer's motives. Perhaps he thought I might be summoned for important reasons? Under the circumstances, don't you think you really ought to change your program? Now there's an interesting concept. A hologram that programs himself. What would I do with that ability? Create a family? Raise an army? I know a little about holographic programming. I could probably reprogram you. That makes me feel particularly confident. Has anyone ever told you you have a lousy attitude? If you don't like the doctor's attitude, there's a man sitting in a console in the Jupiter Station Hollow Programming Center you can write to. His name is Zimmerman. He looks a lot like me, actually. No. Not that I don't enjoy the repartee, but was there a reason you stopped in? I need a second opinion on this. Who gave you the first opinion? I gave it to myself. It's a sample of residue we picked up in a nebula. A nebula? I'm not going to listen to that whole quote, but that is really cool that we have these little sound bites in this environment. What's this terminal over here? Uh, operations. I don't remember what Operations does, but they do have a, school, a cool star chart here. That seems to say something. This is cool. And yeah, you could imagine just, there are so many directions you could take this in. You could imagine this being like a multiplayer game where different people man different stations and you deal with various exercises and scenarios. You know, something like the, uh, something like, I can't remember what it's called, the co well, you, 
You know that thing that Kirk had to do that, that he cheated on? That simulation? This could be like a simulation like that. And, um... Let me see. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with Star Trek lore. Like, I, I actually, like... I, I've seen a fair amount of TNG, and I've seen a fair amount of the original Star Trek, but, like, and I've seen Deep Space Nine, but sometimes I even, like, mix up Enterprise and Voyager. It's kind of embarrassing. What's this room back here? Can I go in here? Nope. That is just a room. What's this station over here? Science station. This is where you scan for life forms. got a little star chart too. You've got a little Voyager thing. Very cool. I, these chairs are like, they have no collision. I can walk right through them. And they seem like of the one thing in here that the scale doesn't feel quite right, the chairs feel a little bit large. But the ceiling is like perfect. It's like the feel, ceiling is like 7 feet right over my head here, and the larger ceiling feels like about 10 feet. Oh, and here's the captain's chair. Very nice. Very nice. I could stand here, and I would be I would be Captain Janeway, and I would be ordering everybody around, all around me, and looking at the view screen, and some hostile captain would come up on there. I'd be like, this is Captain Janeway of the USS Voyager. State your business. And then I could be the first mate if I wanted over here. I hope I didn't get those the wrong way around. Is this... Uh, I want to lean to the left and get a better look at that thing, but I can't lean in DK1. Okay. Um, what else can I do here? Hmm. Well, I could check out this station down here. Captain. Ah! I don't think we're alone. Mr. Tuvok, run a lateral EM scan for me. Coordinates 81 mark 40. Running scan. What do you see, Mr. Paris? It's like a reflection. Something in low orbit when it moves into a certain angle from the sun. He's correct. I'm picking up an ionization trail. Captain, I don't think we're alone. Mr. Tuvok, run a I just restarted the recording. Coordinates 81 mark 40. Running scan. This is pretty neat. What do you see, Mr. Paris? It's like a reflection. Something in low orbit when it moves into a certain angle from the sun. He's correct. I'm picking up an ionization trail. There's another ship in orbit. Using some kind of cloaking device. It's not a cloaking device as we know it, Captain. I cannot say for certain what it is, but the ship does employ some kind of masking circuitry that has affected our sensors. Voyager to away to. Go ahead, Captain. Any unexpected life signs down there, Commander? Nothing but bloodworms. Neelix wants to bring some back for a tartar he wants to make. I'm trying to talk him out of it. We're picking up an unidentified ship in low orbit. Collect your teams and prepare to transport back while we investigate. Acknowledged. That was so cool. You could just imagine, like, if you were sitting in this chair up front and you could be, like, some ensign or something. I don't know who actually sits there. And, like, hearing the captain behind you, some kind of NPC standing here issuing orders and being a part of that mission, that could be really cool. There's just so many different directions you could take this app in. And speaking of which, um, I'm not showing it because I haven't gotten a, uh, the current version to run on my system. But they've actually added functionality to the most recent version that allows you to bring up Netflix on the main screen here and actually view past episodes of Star Trek on the main screen. Like, just you can sit in one of these chairs and watch it up on the main screen in, in the bridge of the USS Voyager. How awesome is that? And just imagine, like, every show could have a diorama like this where you can it could be a, a, an, a pivotal set from the show where, and you could be in that set and watching the show inside the set and like like imagine if you were like in, in, in Lord of the Rings and you had like you were in you were in uh, you were in your, your hobbit hole at home in Hobbiton and, and you like had some kind of magic magic viewing thing and that you are viewing things on. I don't know. It doesn't make much sense for that setting. But like um you could you could imagine like um like like watching old sitcoms like inside the house where the sitcom takes place on the on their old TV in their living room. All kinds of things like that. What's in this door? Did I go to this door yet? Come in. Ah. 
Captain, I've observed something peculiar about the pulses. They're getting faster. Faster? The interval between each pulse has decreased by 0.47 seconds since we arrived. I can offer no explanation. That's only one of the mysteries we're dealing with, Mr. Tuva. Take a look at this. It's virtually a desert. Not one ocean. Not one. Now I wish I could actually go into the captain's chamber. That would be cool. I want to explore the whole ship now. Like, they've got this cool diagram here. I just want to visit every part of it. Where am I on this ship? Where's the bridge? Is it up at top there? Is that it? Or is that the holodeck? I don't know. Where's the bridge? Whatever. Yeah, I want to I wanna visit every part of the ship now. They need to model the whole thing. You guys get on that, right? Okay. But yeah, that... That is an awesome demo. I'm going to come out of it and talk about it for a little bit. So that was the Starship Bridge demo, and they did a really great job of recreating that set just like it looks on the show, of giving it this really nice realistic style of embedding all these cool Easter eggs in it that, um, that have real audio from the show and everything. And, and it just it, when, the moment you step in there, it sets your mind spinning about all the possibilities for how, how you could integrate traditional media with, with VR, about how, how you could build VR experiences around around traditional media characters and plots and, and settings and 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 on top of that it's such a compelling demonstration of what Unreal Engine 4 can do for the Rift. Um, like I mentioned the biggest issue with Unreal Engine 4 is still uh, performance. Um, I was I was struggling to get 45 frames a second um, at best in uh, between 30 and 40 in that in that demo at 1440p and for the uh, final commercial Rift I'm probably going to be needing to get 90 fps at 1440p and that's that's double that and this is just a simple diorama so uh that's going to be pretty challenging to to meet um but yeah it's um i'm i definitely think that this is a great way uh this engine is a great way for people who have never created any kind of game before to get started and and there's there's a there's not much in the way of kind of pre-built like there's not a huge asset store like unity has where you can just grab things that people have already made so you do have to build more of your stuff from the ground up but um they are starting to develop a collection of assets and and it's a and it can be a good experience for you to start to create your own assets as well and just start to build up everything um and build up all of your skills your modeling and, and programming and all that anyway um that's all for today uh thanks for watching and everybody have a great Every day.